Okay, now we're getting into module 32. And in module 32, we start to shift a little bit from the polynomial information to rational functions. And rational functions just means functions that um, have fractions. So you'll have x's in the denominator, okay? So this is the beginning of it. So the first thing we need to do when it comes to rational functions is talk about something that we haven't talked about before, which are called asymptotes, okay? And asymptotes are basically invisible lines And if you want to know what the vertical asymptotes are, you have to write equations for those vertical lines. And we know that the equations for vertical lines are always in the form x equals a number. And what number would that be? 1, 2, 3. It would be negative 3 for the left vertical asymptote. And x equal to 1, 2 for the right vertical asymptote. Now for the Horizontal asymptote would be this dotted line here, and the form of horizontal lines is y equals a number, and the number that this exists on is the number zero. So that's the equation for the horizontal asymptotes. Now, important information bits. You can never, ever, ever cross a vertical asymptote. Never. So you will never have a point or a graph across this vertical asymptote. However, the horizontal asymptotes, you can cross in the middle, even over here, right next to the vertical asymptotes, but eventually the graphs will trail off toward that invisible line and not cross, okay? So it could cross in the middle, just not all the way out toward infinity and negative infinity. Okay, now the domain of this is all the x values from left to right. So notice this is going from negative infinity, and if I trace it coming this way, I do not have, there's a, like a gap here between all my x values. So it can only go up to negative 3, but it cannot include negative 3 because there's no point on that vertical line. Then you pick up on the other side of the vertical line, and it goes all the way till you get to this vertical line. And then finally, this side of the region would be 2, and it goes all the way to positive infinity for x. Now the range is the lowest y value to the highest y value. Now even though this and this have a hole in the middle, right? They have a gap. So it would go from negative infinity to zero, and then from zero to positive infinity. Normally that would be my range. But this middle part does not have a break. It consistently has y values from negative infinity all the way up to positive infinity. Therefore, that overrides the fact that there's a gap for the other two pieces of the graph. So the range here is negative infinity to infinity because of that middle section here. Now, for the x-intercepts, they only want the x-values. I only have one x-intercept right there, and it's at positive 1. The y-intercept, I have one y-intercept here, and it's at positive 2. Okay, so now we're going to do the next example. The equations of my vertical asymptote. I only have one vertical dotted line, and it is at x equals 3. I have one horizontal line and it's at y equals 1. The domain here is from negative infinity to this vertical asymptote, so negative infinity to 3. Then it picks up on the other side and goes all the way to positive 3. So 3 
or goes to positive infinity. So three to positive infinity. The range is from bottom to the top. So I start off going to negative infinity and it goes up, 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 up until it reaches this Y value of one and then it jumps over to this side and it goes all the way up to positive infinity. So my range is going to have a break in it. This Y value is that break in the graph. My X intercepts, I have one X intercept here at six and then my Y intercept, I have one Y intercept there at two. So, so far that's all they expect me to do. Now here it talks about finding the asymptotes of a rational function. So we want to find the vertical asymptotes and we want to find the horizontal asymptotes. To do that, we need to know some information about how you find that, okay? And it looks like my purple pin is running out here, so I'm going to have to toss that one and let me grab another one. Much better. Okay, so the first thing we know is for vertical asymptotes. Okay, so for vertical asymptotes, you basically just set your denominator equal to zero and solve. And you'll figure out the equations for the vertical asymptotes. For the horizontal asymptotes, those are a little bit different, okay? Those you have to compare degrees. And you have one of three cases. If the degree of the numerator equals the degree of the denominator, then you have a horizontal asymptote at y equals the leading coefficient of the numerator over the leading coefficient of the denominator. Okay. The second case you could have is if the degree of the numerator is less than the degree of the denominator. In that case, you have a horizontal asymptote at y equals um, zero automatically. And then the third case, there's actually four of them. The degree of the numerator is greater than the degree of the denominator by one, only by one, okay? Then you have a horizontal asymptote at y equals the quotient after division. Okay. And then the last case is if your degree of your numerator is greater than the degree of the denominator by more than one. And if that's the case, you have no horizontal asymptote. And actually, this is incorrect. You do not have a horizontal asymptote if the degree is greater than, right? For both of these cases, three and four, you have no horizontal asymptote. However, you could have a slant asymptote. Another word for it is called oblique asymptote. Okay, so just in case you can't see that, okay? So if the degree of the numerator is bigger than the degree of the denominator, whether it's by one or more than one, in both cases you do not have a horizontal asymptote. This one doesn't have any other asymptotes, horizontal or slant. So no slant asymptote either. But if the degree is greater by just exactly one, you do have a slant asymptote, also called an oblique asymptote. And the way you find out what it is, that equation is going to come from the quotient after you divide. Okay. So let's see what kind of cases we have here. 
So first off, for the first example, for function f, I'm going to find the vertical asymptote by taking my denominator and equaling it to zero and solving. And so this is my vertical asymptote. For my horizontal asymptote, I'm gonna look at the degree of my numerator and the degree of my denominator and compare. Now the degree is the highest exponent of x. Notice that in my numerator, I don't have any x's. So my degree for my numerator is zero. However, in the denominator, I do have x and that exponent is one. So the case I have is where my degree of the numerator is less than the degree of the denominator. And in that case, my horizontal asymptote is automatically at y equals zero. Okay, let's look at g. So for vertical asymptote, we're going to set our denominator equal to zero. For horizontal asymptote, we're gonna compare the degrees. The degree of a constant is zero, and the degree of a linear is one. So I have um, the degree of the numerator is less than the degree of the denominator. So my horizontal asymptote is at y equals zero. And then finally, my last one, for vertical asymptote, we take the denominator equal to zero. And then for my horizontal asymptote, degree of a constant is going to be zero. Degree of a linear is one. And so that's less, which means I have a horizontal asymptote at y equals zero. Now they're gonna change the kind of functions, but what I'm doing is exactly the same thing, okay? So for the vertical asymptotes, <clears throat> it just wants us to find the vertical asymptotes, and that's it. So take your denominator and set it equal to zero. That's my vertical asymptote. Take this denominator, equal it to zero, and there's my vertical asymptote. That not too bad. Now they want us to find all the asymptotes, right? Oh, this one wants us to graph the vertical asymptotes. So basically you're going to, in Alex, pick the dotted line and at one, two, three, four, you're going to put the dotted line there, okay? Same thing with this, this is, this is basically 3.5. So you're gonna put the dotted line in between three and four. Okay, now here it tells us to find the horizontal and vertical asymptotes um, of these functions. So vertical, take the denominator and equal it to zero. There's your vertical asymptote. Your horizontal, you have to look at your degrees, okay? So here you have a degree of two, and the degree of the denominator is one. So you have the case where the numerator is greater than the denominator. So you don't have a horizontal asymptote. It is greater by one, so you do have a slant asymptote, but that's not what this problem asked you. It specifically asked you for vertical and horizontal. So this one has no horizontal. And so then I would only graph this one here, a vertical dotted line at negative one half, or negative one and a half. Now for this problem, we take our denominator but a square cannot end up being negative. So there's no solutions here, which means there's no vertical asymptotes at all. And then for your 
horizontal, you have the degree of the numerator is 2. The degree of the denominator is also 2. So then your horizontal asymptote is at y equals the leading coefficient of the numerator over the leading coefficient of the denominator. So then you would have a dotted line at negative one and a half, but no vertical asymptote to draw. Okay, here we would take our denominator and equal it to zero. So I get x equal to one, and then you would compare your degree so the degree of the numerator is 1, the degree of the denominator is 2, so you have the case where the numerator is less than the denominator, so there's automatically an asymptote y equals 0. So when you draw this one, you would have to draw the vertical at 1 and then the horizontal right on top of the x-axis at 0. So here we're going to take our denominator equal to 0. So then we get 1, 2, 3, 2 asymptotes for vertical. And then here the degree of the numerator is equal to 2. The degree of the denominator is equal to 2. So we have the coefficient of the numerator, which is 1 over the coefficient of the denominator, which is one. So you should have a horizontal asymptote at y equals one.